I'm Mike Stuchiner, Master Herbalist, and <clears throat> I'm here with Z Natural Foods. Today's uh, topic of conversation is one of the more commonly asked questions here at Z Natural Foods in regards to talking about the difference between what a whole food powder is or a whole herb powder versus a juice powder or an extract powder. I'm going to make this very simple for everyone by describing what each one of those powders are, the different processes they go through, and why one would want to maybe take one versus another. So if you're looking to get what you would consider a full spectrum of nutrients and phytochemicals in their most whole balanced form, you always want to utilize the whole herb or whole food powder. All this is, is the whole herb or the whole food that has been either freeze-dried or low temperature dried and then milled into a powder. Now, what that drying process does is it basically removes the water. Now, what you're going to ultimately lose is maybe 5 or 10% of the nutrient content itself, but overall, when you, what you do lose is not going to be phytochemistry levels and you're certainly not going to uh, bring that food out of balance because what you lose, you lose across the entire board or across the entire spectrum of those nutrients and or phytochemicals. So with that said, this is the best and easiest way to continue utilizing a food in its most wholesome form. but now it has a longer shelf life to it because you've removed the water. It's important to understand it's the water content in most cases that will give you a shorter shelf life. The longer something stays on the shelf and it has water in it, that water within that food is what is making that food uh, more perishable and, um, and it's making it more vulnerable to bacteria and fungus and things of that nature. That's why, for example, your berries like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, that's the reason why they go bad very, very quickly because they're high water content. Also, the important thing that, that you should understand is that that's also part of the reason why a more expensive process has to be done in order to preserve those foods and that's often why the freeze drying process is by far the best way to be able to preserve a simple fruit like a strawberry, a blueberry, and a raspberry. Okay? So basically what you have is ultimately you have the whole food that's been dried and milled into a powder ready to eat and it does have on on average a two to three year shelf life easily. Next is the juice powder. Now the juice powder is just like it sounds. You're taking a large amount of either a fruit or a grass in most cases. Usually you're not going to find this with most herbs and you're going to put it through a commercial a commercialized juicer and then low temperature or freeze dry that food. Okay? In this specific process, what you end up getting is you get a higher concentration of the nutrients and phytochemicals, but what you lose is the fiber, which in some cases can be very important to some people because that helps with the digestion process, and you're also losing from that food um, the nutrients and phytochemicals that are inherent only to that fiber and need the digestive process in order to release those nutrients. So who would want to use a juice powder? Well, oftentimes we find ourselves using juice powders if we want to use a lot more of something, or excuse me, I should say, get a lot more in a smaller amount because you're getting a more concentrated version of it. So for example, if you wanted a high level of polysaccharides, for example, in goji berry, then a goji berry extract or a goji berry juice powder would be the way to go. But if you want that whole food version that you're going to get the other things like the good fats from the seeds and things of that nature, then ultimately you want to go with either the whole fresh or the whole as a dried powder. The third and final process is what's called an extract powder. And again, this is often found with herbs. The concentration levels can be very different. 
uh, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 30 to 1, 50 to 1, 100 to 1, 200 to 1. What that basically means is that you're getting a much, much higher concentration of this food. Now, the difference between a juice powder and extract powder is the process it's going through. In an extract powder, you're not juicing the food. What you're doing is you're using either alcohol or a combination of alcohol and water to extract the, the, the main phytochemical constituents that science believes are what makes this herb do what it does. Now, it is important to understand that in this case, what you are losing is anything that could be inherent to the roughage or the fiber within that herb or food that does not respond to the extraction process. There is no extraction process that is perfect. And it is also important to understand that an extraction process of, these, of this nature can take time to be able to do. Most often it can take a matter of weeks, even a matter of months, to properly do a complete and total extraction of that food or of that herb. So it is a very time-consuming process. It is a wonderful way to make a food into a medicine. And more importantly, what we provide to you at Z Natural Foods is a full spectrum extract. We don't give a standardized extract where one or more of the specific constituents are at higher level. When we extract and when we concentrate, everything across the board goes up in that same exact level of concentration. So why would someone want to use this type of a food? Simple, just like the juice powder, you're getting a more concentrated version of the actual herb and or food. And in this case, you're also getting in, in this particular case, what you're getting is perhaps even a more usable version because sometimes when you, some herbs, not all, but some herbs when you use the whole herb and it has not been prepared properly, you're not going to absorb as much of that herb or food. Okay, so for example, here's a great, here's a perfect example. Tomatoes and lycopene. Eating raw tomatoes is a wonderful thing and it's delicious, but those lycopene, the lycopene and all the um, constituents found in the carotenoid family, you need to cook those tomatoes in order to extract those constituents out. So again, not all foods are perfect in their whole raw form, and that's why these other processes are so important to be able to get some of the nutrition out of these foods and herbs. I hope that what you've learned today is very helpful, and I hope that this has cleared up any confusion that you might have on these different processes. Thanks so much. I'll see you all soon. Bye.